three, two, one. All right, welcome to another episode of If You Build It with my girl Kat. We just met today from New York in person. <laughs> All right, you could go ahead and introduce yourself, let the folks know where you're from and what it is that you do. Ooh, I feel like the hardest question that I need to answer in life is what is it that I do? And I mm -hmm. feel like that changes daily. But I'm Kat. I go by Retro Barbie. Retro Barbie 92 on the IG. Mm -hmm. I'm from Queens, New York. Always will represent. Mm -hmm. And I'm believing these days that I am a media personality. Okay. As well as a creative manager and a curator of content and events, specifically for the black community. My mission is to uplift, empower, and connect the black creators, black brands, black businesses, just so we can have a prosperous community and prosperous culture. A lot of times our culture has been appropriated and made to just benefit others, and it's time that we start benefiting ourselves. Okay, how would you define content manager? Well, I say creative manager because okay. I manage creatives mm -hmm. in a sense of creatives. We have this complex where our mind goes a thousand miles per hour, but it's very hard to get your idea into an actual reality concept. Mm -hmm. So my part that I've started this year and thoroughly enjoy is helping their ideas come to real life. So ironing it out, organizing their ideas, connecting them with the right people and putting it out there to see the way that we can get it received by the masses. Okay, so you have a community of people around you. Yeah, right, I've built me, a community of people so around you me. you built a community. Okay, tell me a bit about this community that you've built. And if you can't drop a name or two and say how you built with that person. So let's go with your top two names that come to mind. Well, I'll say the first person is my first client mm -hmm. that comes to mind. So Max Stanley <coughs> Kazao, he is a licensed mental health uh, counselor. He specializes in relationship therapy and for black couples specifically. Mm -hmm. We met because during the pandemic, I was doing a lot of lies for Black Men Cry Too. And Black Men Cry Too, plug yes. plug. So I was okay. like, <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get back to that. <laughs> Remember that name? Remember? <laughs> And I wanted to interview a therapist on IG Live during mm -hmm. the pandemic. I asked one of my friends who I went to college with, who is a therapist, if she could connect me to a black male therapist. Yeah. That's how we got connected from our first phone call conversation. We like synced immediately. And after I asked him to do IG Live, he asked if he could be a guest on the show. Mm -hmm. And that was after I did the first season. So he was my second episode for season two in our first time meeting in person. I literally thought the day before, like, what if I manage creators? Mm -hmm. Could that be a field? Could I do that? I feel like I enjoy doing that. Brainstorming, developing ideas, ironing out, fleshing out, building experiences and environments and communities. And while we were sitting and talking before we started recording, he looked at me and said, I need a manager. Would you manage me? Mm -hmm. And I was like, <laughs> Who sent you? <laughs> Who told you? How are you? I don't like this. <laughs> Making me nervous. But through that, the experience and the way that we've grown together, I got him. He only had 3,000 followers right now. He is dancing on 10K. He's okay. also playing with my emotions. Just gets a 10K. That's besides the point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with that, like getting him, seeing opportunities where he can fit in, getting him in those opportunities. He was on a podcast called Hard or Soft. Mm -hmm. It's a sex positive podcast by two sex positive males. Mm -hmm. So here you have these sex positive males and this relationship therapist guy, and they're having the most dynamic conversation ever in front of your eyes. And yeah. you saw that and you envisioned that and you plugged those pieces together. Mm -hmm. And to see the way that they've been building since then and one of the guys who's on the show, one of the main guys, now he has a new restaurant. And I reached out to him like, hey, I wanna be a bartender, so you're looking. Mm -hmm. And not only did he see an opportunity for me to be a bartender, now he's asking me to do menu curation. Mm. So it's like- Are you getting paid for each one of these things that someone is asking you for? 
Okay, cool. So you have a, a menu of, hey, this is how much this service will cost. I'm developing a menu. Okay. Right, and that cool. helps me develop myself. So that's how <clears throat> I'm building a community around me. I'm seeing who's doing what that I admire mm -hmm. and that aligns with who I am. Because mm -hmm. I've had a particular sponsor for Black Men Cry 2 and as much as yes, you're paying me every month, you're not aligning with the core mission, values, mm -hmm. and foundation of the brand and of who I am as a person. So you need to start putting boundaries and parameters to the contracts of sponsorships. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. Even if it means I'm saying no to money, mm -hmm. I'd rather say no to money and yes to my dignity. Not all money is good money. You gotta stand up for who you are. No one else is gonna do it. So exactly. it's literally your job. Yes. <laughs> and I have a lot of people looking at me like, no, I think you should still keep it. And I'm like, I keep asking myself, do I want to continue with them way too often? Mm -hmm. Which tells me that I do not want to continue yeah. with them. And, and it's time to move on. I can't just think, like as much as I'm money driven, I can't just think money because mm -hmm. that's how you sell out. Okay, no, that's real. So the very first client that you managed, that you referenced, you said he's a therapist. Mm -hmm. A okay. relationship therapist. Now, the reason I ask this question is, I used to watch Joe Budden podcasts, and uh, I forgot the name of the all-woman podcast that he has. That was all when that whole scandal went down, I, I just didn't, I didn't like the way that that went down. And I was like, you know what? I think, I think I'm just going to let this go. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought when I first saw it, I was like, I feel like this doesn't make sense. Something's going to happen. Then it, it happened, it, and I was like, hey. It didn't make sense, but they made it work. And then when that something happened, and I heard how it was handled, I was like, oh, wow, I was rooting for you guys. I'm going to have to let this go. Yeah. So when it comes to like mental health, it, language matters. Yeah. So unfortunately, Joe, because of his personality, wants everyone to do the, oh, I'm seeing a therapist. I am now the therapist. And it's like, bro, you seeing the therapist doesn't turn you into the therapist, even if you understand how the dynamic works and what yeah. you're working towards. That's number one. Number two, they've made the mistake a couple of times between his show and other people's show of bringing on people who are life coaches. And it's like, life coaches are not therapists. And when you have a platform that's that big and you cross the line of letting people know, hey, this life coach is a therapist or they can give me therapy. It's like, no, that's mm -hmm. not how that works. You're muddling the message. Yeah. And then everyone's understanding is, oh, so I need a life coach. That's what I need. It's like, no, a life coach has this specific thing. A therapist does this specific thing. You can get a life coach who is a certified therapist, but the language in they are a certified therapist who's a life coach is very different from someone who's just a life coach. Right. And it's not to devalue that, but it just gets dangerous when people cross those messages. So you are dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> so how do you feel about moments like that that happen? I think you kind of hit the nail on the head with saying it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's dangerous because the work that I'm believing and that I'm aligning and... And I'm, you're doing. Yeah, you're doing. I've seen it. I watched episodes. I listened. I, I was like, oh, that was cute. I'll take that. I like that. No, no, no. That was cute. Now I keep going. Not even try again. I was like, no, that's, that's correct. I am doing it for a specific reason and I'm doing it for... Mm -hmm. The people that tune into the Joe Budden podcast is mainly the people that I'm essentially targeting, but I know it's going to take a really, not a really long time, a longer time to get to because you don't have that mindset. You aren't privy to people with these perspectives or those that are looking to change circumstances. You only have a thought that something doesn't fit right or feel right, but you don't know how to explore that thought, self reflect. Mm -hmm. You don't have the tools or the resources to identify like where is this coming from. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of times I've met and dealt with men in stoic men, men from the hood, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. You know you have an anger issue but you don't know where the anger issue comes from. Yeah. That's a problem mm -hmm. for me and I know from personal experience and that's why I never ever want to feel like holier than thou or mighty than thou and that's why I want to do this work and why I'm doing this work is because I've had to go through that. I've had to self-identify from negative behaviors that I don't want associated with who I believe I am and who I want to be. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, I needed to self-reflect. I needed to recognize like there's something wrong. 
and it doesn't matter that I came from a two family household, I come from middle class families, I went away to college, like something was still wrong, like I wasn't okay. And it wasn't until being around people who are talking about therapy in a lighter sense or seeing changes in themselves or learning about themselves. And I had a therapist friend who made me recognize like, hey, mm. something's going on. Mm -hmm. You should probably you should probably do it. Like it's time. Mm -hmm. It's time. You should take that leap. And taking that leap, it's only been three years and the difference of the person I am, the words that I keep hearing is self-aware. So now me being self-aware, I can identify and change my reaction and my response to situations that occur with a more level-headed mindset. And that way it kind of is a safety net for me then because I'm able to be like, don't flip out. Mm -hmm. Don't burn the house down. Mm -hmm. Don't send nobody there. Take a second. Why are you upset? What is triggering your anger in this moment? What is triggering your emotions in this moment? Boom. Now you can identify it. Ooh, I got to put a new boundary up. <laughs> hey, what we not going to do is this. And if you do this again, I'm going to step out. Because I know if you continue this, you will take me back to a place that I've worked very hard to get out of. And that's gonna help me grow, evolve, and get more opportunities, meet new people, mm -hmm. and just live the life that I wanna live. So I feel that it's dangerous if you muddle that message because people need the help. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize the help that they need, they don't realize the triggers, they don't realize what's going on within their self here. Mm -hmm. And here controls everything. Yes. So if you're given that mixed message, people are still gonna walk around being toxic, mm -hmm. being problematic, and still not seeing anything wrong with it. They're gonna think that the words are just words, but they lack meaning. It's, I'm just, just gonna just say whatever. Yeah. I'm gonna say something so <laughs> nasty and negative and then just apologize for it afterwards. Like, no, your apology doesn't mean anything if your behavior continues. Mm -hmm. You have a problem. Yeah. And you as a problem, I need the problematic to start becoming the minority, to recognize that like you cannot just continue living life being such a problem or a burden to others because of your pain. Hurt people hurt people. You will not bleed on me because you never took the time to bandage your wounds. I do not want you to continue bleeding on others. I've been bled on, I've bled on people. It's problematic. And it bleeds all into the same thing if you're not careful, ironically enough. All right, so I have two things to say, because the viewers can't see this, and I recognize this, but you have glasses on. You, when you were saying that, I was like, you are going to that place right now <laughs> on camera, because because I was actually there earlier this morning. I don't know if you saw my post, but I had a moment where I was like, oh, I should speak on this and why I support this person the way that I do so people could have an understanding to our relationship. That was like a moment earlier today. Um... That's number one. Number two, when you put up new boundaries, do you ever make time for yourself to feel what that new space that now exists in that boundary is like and where it starts and stops? I think boundaries for me has never really been explored until this year. Mm -hmm. So... It's okay to say no. I'm not too sure. I believe I'm starting to understand and identify mm -hmm. what the spaces need to be for myself to exist in peace. Yeah. And that definitely comes from and learned from losing my mother at the top of this year. My condolences. I, thank you. Um, for me to continue existing and showing up every day, mm -hmm. it's a fight. It's a battle. It's tough. It's hard but I do it off the strength of, I'm doing it for her. I have this relationship with her. She has these thoughts and these plans and these goals and me and her have talked about it. It's not like my mother was just the only one to envision this life for me. Like we've spoken about what life looks like for me and goals and achievements and accomplishments. And I wanna continue that legacy. I want to perform those things, but in order to perform it, every day is a challenge. Every day is tough. What do I need to do to ensure that I'm not gonna be the one, one gust of wind can throw me off. How can I avoid gust of winds coming often? So if it's you 
causing me anxiety because something is always an issue. Something is always an issue. Your feelings are always hurt. This is no longer a me thing. Yeah, that's a you. You need to figure out what's going on over there and you need to stop bringing it here because mm -hmm. I don't have it for you. And also when you figure it out, I can change my language and tone and we can work on this together. But if it's every day there's something you so you're I have to tailor every day and think twice as hard to no, I can't. Mm -hmm. We can't. Yes. We need to be a part. I like how you went from high to we because you're trying to keep it together. Yeah. Like, hey, this is we, we can do this together. Thing. We we can. We can, but then like as much as we can, it's like so we can't. And that's okay. I'm okay yeah. not doing this with you because I can no longer attempt to do this with you because I don't feel like you're doing it for yourself over there. Okay. Or identifying or acknowledging. Mm -hmm. And that's when some of the boundaries like people are human and I understand life goes on and Everyone's life is different. You move with self, but if you're moving with self, 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 mm -hmm. and you never step back, and it's like friendships, relation, our relationship. Mm -hmm. Every person that's in your life is a relationship. Yes. What are you doing to help maintain and support the other person in the relationship? So that's where the boundaries come up. It's like I need reciprocity in my relationship. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it, you're violating boundary. You need to go. Okay. okay. I need grace in my relationships. There are going to be days I'm going to be an airhead there's gonna be days I'm gonna break down if you're not moving with a sense of okay let me come to you like gracefully mm -hmm. hey this then the third and you're coming with the same aggression because you're coming with yourself first mm -hmm. that's a problem for me you're violating a boundary you don't know where I'm at mentally for this day I am not the same I will not be the same and if you're moving as if I'm the same person as if life is the same for me mm -hmm. you're disrespecting a boundary for me because you're not considering what life feels like for me these days. I don't need you to check in. I don't need the coddling. I need the grace and the consideration. Mm -hmm. So that's when like boundaries for me feels like, feels like grace, consideration, and level-headed conversation. We can disagree, we can have issues, mm -hmm. or things that need to be talked about. How are we talking about it? Are we having a conversation? Do I feel like we're hearing each other? So I feel like we're seeing each other. If I do not feel that way, that is a that's something that I know that I need. I understand what that feels like, or I want to feel that way. And if I don't feel that way, that's a boundary you're violating. You have to go. <laughs> it's a separate package. There's nothing in it. You gotta so, go. So these five minutes right here, that was the description of your current understanding of your boundary. That was beautiful. <laughs> I'm glad it was because I'm coming at the top of my mind, like, what does it look like? What does it feel like? <laughs> I think on the drive back to New York, you're going to be like, damn, <laughs> damn, these questions. Yo, I just I write this in my journal. Usually happens that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to bring it back to your second client or creative okay. that you've worked with that you felt just had an impact on your work and what it is that you're doing or where you'd like to go? It's two in one. Mm. So I so used- So one person or two people? Two people that do mm -hmm. the same thing, mm -hmm. differently but the same. So I'll constantly go back and forth between two people when I have an idea about myself. Okay. Because I trust their judgment, mm -hmm. their work ethic, their capabilities, and they know, understand, and like, they can tell me about me before I can tell me about me. Okay. Where do you think that comes from? Well. Would you like ginger ale on your whiskey? I would, thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> One is a Capricorn. Okay. So we're Capricorn soul sisters, it is mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. And our relationship started, so these two people, our relationship started with Something doing with. business. One was in college. Mm -hmm. I was a sophomore in college, and we both were the event chairs for Bragg, which is the Black Retail Action Group. Which college? Philadelphia University. We don't <laughs> acknowledge that it's Jefferson, so it's Philly you on this side. Mm -hmm. Go Rams. <laughs> um, it was a PWI, so every black person, I was like, no, we're friends. Like, then we gonna make our own little HBC in here. I went to Catholic University of America. So I was doing that with her, like we just clicked business wise, and then mm -hmm. we grew our personal relationship um, during that time frame. So I already know how you work. Our ideas bounce off each other; they're strong, and I love that as a creative. Like 
being able to bounce ideas and think outside the box and push limits of how I think and capabilities and new concepts. The other person was two years after I graduated from my MBA, mm -hmm. so around 2016. Did you say this person's name on the first person? say their name, give them a shout out. I'm probably gonna ask you for the photos so we can put their photo up over uh, the edit. Like, uh, this person's name, this is who it they're is. They're gonna be like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's you. Mm -hmm. Just make uh, sure it's a good picture. No one complains when it's a good picture. That's true, so now yeah. I gotta ask them. Yeah, like, just send me your favorite picture yeah, of yeah. you. Great picture. Don't ask why. Yeah. Trust me, I got you. Ask for a quality pic uh, picture and be like, hey, this many pixels. <laughs> I the PNG. The PNG, thanks, not the PNG. Yeah. <laughs> so the college friend is Diamond Newman. She's mm -hmm. a DC resident. Okay. And okay. a Maryland Baltimore girl. Okay. Um, that's my girl. Felix Vargas. Mm -hmm. He's the person I met in 2016, mm -hmm. and it was almost the same thing. It's like we fell in love business wise. Okay. And then built our personal relationship, and it's because of the fact that. Both of these people are very similar to the way that I live and operate, mm -hmm. what they prioritize, what their goals are in life, it aligns. So with them, I feel seen as a personal professional, if that makes sense, or personal creative because the two aligns together. Yeah. I know there's times where it's like, my nine to five does not define me. I'm not that person. This is just what I do to get health insurance. Do you have a nine to five? I would've never known. The way you move, I mean, talk on my stuff off camera but yeah that's what I was like because mm, we're gonna see if that changes by the time this drops hopefully <laughs> I mean we have the date that this drops so yeah it's, you got you got time you got time a lot can happen in that time a lot and that's what I want will happen in that happen time in yeah this time I need that to change. I want people to be like, you have a nine to five? No, I do not. <laughs> no. And I'm still doing quite fine. That's what I would like to say. Was your nine to five basically what you um what you went to the first night we had that conversation? No. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. All right, keep going. <laughs> That's why I have all these little things to see. Well, if I do all these things, will mm -hmm. that sustain me from mm -hmm. not going back there? Yeah, good old supplements. I got you. Yeah. Um, Felix. What's Felix. Felix. So yes. yes. So we met because we both worked in the event industry, mm -hmm. and we were the young cats in the event industry. And we saw a problem in the industry, and together we decided to build this business. Mm -hmm. We dissolved. We brought in two of our other friends. We did it for about two to three years, and then we dissolved it and stayed really good friends. Mm -hmm. So that was a great experience for myself as well to like build a business, build businesses with friends and dissolve a business and still maintain the friendships to this magnitude. As well as sort of using it to, we all learned our individual strengths and weaknesses in that process. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's never a regret. It was an, a great experience for all of us to step into ourselves. Mm -hmm. So because of that, and because me and his <clears throat> mind was very much similar throughout the whole process, yeah. I know I can look to you and take actual guidance and trust your opinion because you're gonna think of it. You can ask somebody like, mm, what do you think if I did this on Black Men Cry too? Oh yeah, I think, that, I think that'd be cool, that'd be dope, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it ends there, and you're yeah. like, <laughs> okay. Cool, 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 cool. Concise. Very concise. Cool. Yeah. If I go to either one of them, they'll be like, hmm, yeah, I see that, but if you do it that way, have you considered this, 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 and this? Mm -hmm. Or maybe if you do it like this, or I think you should look at this and use this as a guidance, it's they'll like... They'll give you the whole picture. The whole thank picture. you! Because yeah. I'm big picture, missing out on details person. That's okay. me to a degree. Mm -hmm. When I work with other people, I'm looking at their details. You give me the big picture, mm -hmm. I'll give you all the details that's needed for the big picture. So that's why working with them as creators has been a blessing, and especially calling them my close friends, because they'll also understand, <clears throat> well, what are you going through personally that you want to do that? Mm -hmm. Or do you think that would be a good decision for you currently? So it's the check-in as well, and for me, it's also if I'm shying away from saying things, like I don't consider myself a media personality, I haven't considered myself a media personality, and I had Diamond in my ear for a really long time, like, so everything you keep saying, everything you get excited about, <laughs> everything that you're doing, all of your feedback means your personality. Mm -hmm. Own it, say it, and stop running from it. Yeah. 
because that's also a problem as creatives we can run and hide mm -hmm. it's exposing ourselves if i'm saying i'm a personality that means i have to perform i love hiding so do i yeah i love hiding so oh my god is that a rock <gasps> <laughs> like, yeah is that you <laughs> we see your hair <laughs> and i keep telling people like i like to go to events and just you know, let me observe the room and stay in the corner. And they're like, but I can see you. Yeah. Your hair. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, but I don't. Please don't. You know, it's funny. Your hair is not even that loud, though. Yes. I think because, I don't know if you do this on purpose, the roots are black. And then you got color. So it's like, oh, what's, she added color, not, oh, that's a lot of color. It changes every two months. So mm -hmm. this time you see black in the roots. There's mm -hmm. times where you don't see black in the roots. This time it's short. There's other times it's down to my waist. Mm -hmm. um, so since it varies so often, but that's the consistent part of me, everyone knows if you see a girl with colorful braids, like, oh, cat's coming or cat's here. <laughs> Even though I just try to like dip in and be like, oh, I'm just trying to look around, observe the room, mm -hmm. kiki below, just blend in with the crowd. Then you can't blend and it's like, oh no. <laughs> I don't know, everyone stop looking over I am now the crowd. I don't want to be seen. <laughs> I, I didn't see this next to, me. to be seen. Who are you? I don't know. I'm asking myself that same question. I don't know who I am. I'm sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me about the, is it a company or is it a campaign? Black Men Cry Too. Yes. It is an LLC business. Mm -hmm. I started it as a passion project because I was afraid that it wouldn't have been received well by the culture or the community. Once I put it out into the world, the week I put it out into the world, we lost Kobe Bryant. Anyone that knows me knows Kobe is my guy. That is the reason why I fell in love with basketball. I mean, I was an Iverson fan first, but I was like in the third grade. <laughs> then I saw Kobe take that half court shot. Mm -hmm. I think maybe it was also the dream team. It was just so much Kobe back then that I was like, He's a superhero to me. So to lose Kobe, someone I admire, the week that I dropped such a sensitive project, and then to see the shift in the culture, I was like, black, black men are crying on, on TV. Black men are breaking down. LeBron is embracing people. LeBron is distraught. Wow, this is being received well. Like this. And that was already the title of your show. Black men cry too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never changed it. January 21st, what was the drop date? Or was that January 14th? I feel like I touched it earlier. January 25th. 25th, 24th. Okay, all right. Cool. 24th. It was the day before my friend's birthday, and his mm -hmm. birthday is the 25th, and he was the first episode I dropped. Mm -hmm. Peter Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, really good episode. He's very insightful, philosophy major. Yeah, he's a philosophy major. Mm -hmm. So that's why when he talks, like his analogies and stuff, it just hones in and it hits the nail on what I wanted to come from the conversation. Like what are the key things people can take away? So having him as the first one as his birthday gift and then Kobe and me and him would go back and forth about like Kobe being the greatest. He wasn't a Kobe fan, but he knows the magnitude of the impact of Kobe. Yeah. So with it being received well and seeing the opportunities that were coming from it, I was like, no, I can make this bigger than what I envisioned it to be. I didn't know if I was gonna go past season one. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to go past six episodes, because at first it was just the first six episodes. Didn't so six episodes per season. It's... It's become something more. It's become something more. Okay. When tell I first me, put it out, it was six episodes that I knew I could record. Mm -hmm. Then I was meeting other people who were having these conversations, and I was like, maybe I can get season one to extend. 10 episodes, because I like 10 episodes for the season. That works for me. And then it was, oh, wow, there's there's more people out there that want to have conversations. There's more people out there that I want to hear their story. I want to learn from that I think if other people heard their insight, their perspective, their knowledge, their experience, they can really connect you. And then that was happening. And then through that, it was, oh, this college wants me to speak to them. This school in DC wants me to speak to their second graders. Oh, people want to hear why I'm doing this. Yeah. Let me see what more I can do. Then I'm learning from the men that came on the show. Wait, you're building this? You're doing this? You're doing that? How can I align with that to help even further? Because I want to give young black and brown boys and girls different representation that we did not see 
when we were younger. We never saw people talk about their mental health. We never saw black and brown kids being creatives and being successful creatives or working in other industries. I remember being in high school and they're basically trying to get me to go to a city college and like take union jobs. Why are you limiting my dreams and capabilities? No, I'm going to go away to college. I'm going to try into an industry that no one in the school, this high school has looked into. I'm going to try my hand and see what I can do with my life.